If you are curious about how to integrate your Snowflake notebook with a Git repository, whether it is a GitLab or a GitHub or any other Git service, this visual guided tour will demonstrate everything you need to know about that integration. Here are the topics we will cover in this video. I am assuming you are already familiar with Snowflake notebooks and Snowflake Git integration as I have already made dedicated videos on these topics. First, we will quickly create Git repository object that is prerequisite to start your Snowflake notebook using the Git service. Once our Git repository object is created, then we will refer to this Git repo object to create a Snowflake notebook by referring to a IPYNB file from the repository branch. We will see the different option that gets automatically enabled when you refer a notebook via Git repo. As a next step, we will make changes to the notebook and see how to push these changes to the Git repo, how the environment.yaml file changes can be pushed and we can add a new file to the repo from this repo integration and finally validate how these changes reflect into our Git repository location. We will also check our query history to see what kind of SQL statements are executed when we perform this operation and also validate all our query profile if they are metadata operation or compute operation. So stay tuned until the end of this video to learn everything about Snowflake Notebook Git integration. Before we proceed, a quick note. All the hands-on exercises are done using Snowflake's free trial version hosted on AWS with the Enterprise Edition. I recommend watching this video in 4K resolution. And if you are a fast learner, consider speeding up the video to 1.25x or 1.5x. If you want to take your Snowflake learning to the next level, check out my Udemy courses. Feel free to contact me on Instagram for discount coupons or any other queries. And yes, if you would like to stay updated on Snowflake's new and popular features, end-to-end -end data engineering projects, architectural concepts, live demo videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Data Engineering Simplified. So, let's jump to our SnowSite web UI to start our learning journey. So, I am in my SnowSite web UI and this is my first worksheet called Git Repository Object. I am using sandbox underscore db dot public schema and this is the role and this is the virtual warehouse. First, we are going to create a Git secret object followed by Git API integration and finally we are going to create a Git repo object. So this is my Git repository and this is my Git repository location. Let's quickly review before I create these objects. So this is the URL which I am going to access while creating this object. I have already created the secret and if you would like to know how we can create a secret object for GitHub, please refer Snowflake GitHub integration video. And if you look into this repository, it has only one notebook which is called notebook underscore app dot ipynb file. And that's what we are going to use when we integrate this git integration. So my secret object is created successfully. Let's check this. So this is my secret object created under sandbox underscore db dot public schema with role account admin. Going to create this API integration object. This got created successfully. This is an account level object and to create account level object, you should use a user which has account admin role assigned to it. So this is my get API integration type external API. Looks good. Now I am going to create my git repo which is referring to this git integration object and to this git secret and this is my repo location. So my git repo object is created. Let's run the show command. So this is here and this is the origin. Looks good. Now I'm going to click this notebooks and let's create a notebook by referring to this it location. So I do not have any notebook right now and my role is system admin. So let me change my role to account admin first. So here I have two options and I'm going to select this first option to access my repository. So let me change the name. And when you try to create a notebook from the repository, you will get this additional option. Let's click on it. So when I click on it, it opens up a new pop-up. And from here, I can choose my database. And we know that we have created our Git repository in the sandbox DB. 
and the moment I select a sandbox DP here, my repo is available. And from the repo, I can select this notebook and I can say select file. And now I would like to create a notebook within the sandbox under public schema, which will use compute virtual warehouse. Let's create it. If you notice this notebook, it has got this branch mean and it has also got the pull option and here, this is a push option. These are the common operation, what we do with our Git repository. When I click on a branch, it says open Git repository on GitHub or open repository detail page. If I click on it, so it comes to this page where I have my readme.md file and my notebook.ipynb file, looks good. If you wish, you can also create your notebook from here. This is another alternate option to create a notebook from your repository. Let's go back to our notebook page. If I click on a pull, it says retrieve file from your remote repository. Any non-conflicting changes will be automatically merged. So let me click on pull. And it says that there is nothing to sync. Looks good. And it also brought my readme.md file. And if I click on it, it opens this file in a separate tab because it is not a notebook file. Looks good. If I go to my query history under monitor screen, I see a couple of alter statements executed and let's see why these alter statements are executed. So first it says create notebook and let's see how this SQL looks like. So if you hover, it says create notebook under this location from at the rate from this Git repository location and use the compute virtual warehouse and this is the main file. So it is not necessary that use this snow site web UI options. You can also use this SQL statement to create a notebook from your repository. Now, when we clicked on the pull operation, this is SQL which got executed and this SQL is nothing but an alter statement which says alter my notebook followed by the keyword pull. Every time you perform some action, you see a equivalent SQL statement is executed and which you can check it from your query history. So let's go back to our notebook again. So let's make some small change. The moment this new text is added, you can see a small icon here, which says M. What it means that this file is modified. Okay, looks good. Now my notebook is currently not running and even though it is not running, I can still push it. But before pushing, let me delete this cells. So I can go and I can press the delete button. And from here also, you can validate that. Let's push this change. So when you click on a push, a new pop-up appears, which says push to git. And this is the file which we have changed. It allows you to write a commit message. Now, this is the author name and this is the address and it will ask for a personal access token. Without that, this push button will not be enabled. Let me copy paste the token. I have entered the token and let's click on a push. So it may take a while and it has successfully pushed. Let's go back to our GitHub page and validate that. Let's click on this recommit. And here I can see the message which I have given during the commit. And this is the author name. Let's see what changes are applied. I can clearly see the change here. And we deleted cell one cell 2 and cell 3 looks good. Now let's make some minor changes over here. And I will open it in edit mode. I'm not supposed to touch this file in a raw format because otherwise it will have some problem. So let me find a place where I can just change a comment. So this I will make it capitally and then this is just change I have done it in the comment and let me push it. So my changes are done and this is what it is visible here. Let's go back to our snow site web UI and pull it. This is what the comment and let me click on pull. Now it says sync is successful and we see yes, my sync is successful. Looks good. Now let's start this and and here I will change my setting from one hour to 15 minutes. Otherwise it will eat up a lot of compute. When you change this setting, this setting does not reflect into your notebook because this is a not notebook specific property. It is primarily 
snowflake notebook object property okay and this is important thing to remember so do not assume that if you are referring a notebook and if you are creating a notebook in snowflake your setting will also be available along with the notebook now let's run all of them so here it says it did not find any module let's quickly add the package as soon as the package is added here you see this package updates are happening environment.yml file is added and my run all is right now disabled because until this updating package background process is finished you cannot run the cell so let's wait for the notebook which failed is coming in red color and you can see the error message so packages got updated successfully so now run all of them again Not sure why it is causing this problem, but I'm able to see my plot. So now I have a new file which I need to push it. So now I'm going to click on push to git. Here I can see my environment.yaml file. And let me put a comment. And I have to give the token once again. So the token is added and now let me push it. So my file got pushed successfully. And now let's go and check our GitHub. So I can see my environment.yaml file is there. Let me go to the home page and click on commit. And here I can see my new package added. When I click on it, this is what it shows. So we have seen how we can quickly create Git integration object. And from that integration object, how we can refer a IPYNB file and create a notebook. And when the notebook is created through the repo, we see what all features are enabled automatically. We, we made the changes to our notebook as well as we added packages and we push the package and the changes back to our Git repository. And we also validated all the changes through our commit. Now let's quickly go and check how the query profile screen looks like. So if you notice my notebook is still running. When I go and check this alter statement, let's see how the query profile looks like. So this is an alter statement executed. And if I click on a query profile, this is a metadata operation and there's no warehouse associated with this operation. Let's quickly check one more. So this is a push statement. Let's click on it. Here I do not see any virtual warehouse. This is my push command. This is username. This is my password, which is not visible name and email not visible and this is the comment validated from our git repo now let's go to the query profile this is also a metadata operation and it does not take any virtual warehouse it means that all the push and pull is being taken care by the snowflake cloud service and any other sql and python execution are taken care by virtual warehouse which is associated with the notebook so we have covered pretty much about Snowflake Notebook Git integration, whether it is a GitHub or a GitLab or Azure DevOps, the process is remain same. Hope you got something valuable from this video. If you did, please hit the like button and this will help others to discover the relevant Snowflake video tutorial. And if you think this can help someone in your team, feel free to share. Thanks for watching and happy learning.